to my studio. This is where I make the magic happen. That sounded so lame. I'm not even going to lie. That sounded so lame. Okay, anyways, this is my studio. And I get so many questions on Facebook and Instagram asking, you know, what lighting system I use, what camera I'm using, uh, what kind of backdrops, what kind of floor drops. You know, basically just wanting me to walk through how I do these photo sessions in more detail. So I thought maybe it'd be fun to start kind of inviting you guys behind the scenes to watch me do some of these sessions and have me explain things in a little bit more detail. So today we're going to be doing a couple of snakes on black because I get a lot of questions about my black um, backdrops and we'll be using um, my flash units. I do change out my lighting so I can't just give you guys a simple this is what I use. That's because I do change out the gear that I use. Um, depending on what I want that finished image to look like, what I'm envisioning. This is my chance, uh, my studio gives me the opportunity to imagine whatever I want and then make it happen. Uh, so I've spent like hours at night not being able to go to sleep. There was even this one instance where apparently I woke up in the middle of the night or sleep shot and I went on Amazon and when I woke up, I was scrolling and I had added a bunch of random things to my Amazon cart that were apparently for a photo shoot that I was super excited about. And unfortunately, when I woke up the next morning, I couldn't remember what that photo session was about. And the props were so random that I had to just delete the whole cart because I had no idea what I was going to do with that stuff. Anyways, I really still wish I would have known what I had thought of in the middle of the night. Anyways, so we're going to do that. Then I'm going to get my F1 Savannah kitten now. And I have an idea for a, a kitten growing in a pot with some potting soil making a mess kind of session. Never done this particular setup, but her mom has named her Sprout. And I think, I just like when somebody names their animal a certain name um, that they're getting from me. It's a lot of fun to try to incorporate that into the photos in some way. So I thought, you know, Sprout, she's growing, potting soil. This could end very badly, to be honest. Um, but hey, that's the fun of playing, right? You don't know how it's going to turn out. It could be wonderful. Or I could regret that I'm telling you all I'm about to try this, and it really suck when it's all said and done. Anyways, um, so we will get started. Most of the photos of me shooting will be taken with my GoPro, simply because I need to use the camera that's filming me right now. Um, but I will show you that camera and explain, you know, what lens I'm using and that kind of thing. And we're going to talk about the lighting for each one and how I'm setting up. Okay, so this is a Alien B 400 and these are made by Paul Buff. I will put the link in the comments um, or in the description of the video. I shoot with two. I have this one. And it has the more narrow box on it. Let's see if I can turn it on so you can kind of see. Okay, so it has the more narrow box. And then I have my big soft box on my B800. This one is more powerful. So typically, I don't know if you guys can see this. Yikes. Okay, sorry. I don't use the fisheye that much. So, anyways, the. B800 stays about halfway. This can slide up or down, and we're gonna do it about halfway because it's extremely powerful in my tiny studio. So these are the two, when I use flash, I do these two. I Ideally, you would have three of these, um, and I did shoot with, I actually had four, and I did used to shoot with that many. You can shoot with just one. Um, when I'm going to use just one, I typically like the big soft box so that you're kind of putting the light everywhere. One. However, I find you do better if you have at least two. The soft um, box is ordered separately. When you order an Alien B, it comes with this metal piece. And you can just shoot with this, but the light is very direct. So if I was going to shoot with this, it's going to just hit this one thing and it's going to be very strong. It's not going to scatter as much as if, for instance, when I pull this one over, you can see it's going to cover a much larger area than this little tiny rink. So you get a more even lighting and it's not quite so powerful. So I love my soft boxes. I highly recommend them. 
Um, I rarely shoot without the soft boxes. So that is the lighting equipment we're going to be using. And for those that are wanting to set up a studio and do want to get the two lights, the B800 is more expensive than a B400. And unless I'm shooting outside, I never shoot with the 800 up on full, simply because it's just this room it does not need that much light. Uh, so I, I do though take mine outside, and if you're going to try to compete with the sun, you uh, need a, a more powerful light. If you're going to shoot with Alien Bees, you will need this. Um, it comes with a long cord, that would be this one. This is a shorter one. You can use a longer cord and hook this to your camera, but I like to be more mobile and be able to move around when I'm shooting and not be tied down. You can't tie me down. Um, so anyways, you do need this. This makes both of these units flash at the same time. And this is what you put on your camera. It goes on top on the hot shoe, so you would mount it, and it communicates so that when I click, you know, for it to take the image, this goes off. Both my lights go off when they're supposed to. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and change out my backdrops. So this is simply a piece of fabric from my local craft store. It is crushed velvet. And velvet, if you're going to use a cloth backdrop, velvet is the best because it absorbs the light. It just sucks it up. So that will give you a crisper, darker background since it's not reflecting that light back at you. If you order the Amazon Prime, you know, your two lights and it comes with two backdrops, blah, blah, blah. The pole is great. That's a cheap Amazon pole back there, like pole set. Um, I used those lights for quite a while. They just weren't very powerful. But I have used them. Everybody starts somewhere. But throw the fabric away. It wrinkles horribly. Terrible to get them out. And that black will never look black in your photos unless you are a master at Photoshop. So that would be my big tip is just go get you a piece of fabric from your local Joann's or Michael's or whatever craft store you like um, and you won't regret it. Now I will say you need to get a lint roller at the same time because boy does this stuff like fuzz and hair and dog hair and cat hair and it picks up everything. But you'll love the effect with your photos. How's that for high tech? Okay, for the floor drop, we are going to use a piece of plexi. This is black reflective plexiglass. And yes, it is chipped. And yes, I do need a new one. I've had this one for like six years probably now. Um, so they do last. If you're doing cats or dogs, they will scratch them up. So be prepared to either edit those off in Photoshop or just suck it up and buy one a lot more often than I have, obviously. I like plexiglass. I use different kinds. So this is black plexi. It's reflective. It is also dirty. I have mirror plexi. And I have clear plexi which needs to be replaced as well. I also have a piece of white plexi because it depends on what I'm going for. So here when I was shooting with this wood, this is a paper backdrop and you can get those for like 30 bucks. I mean every design that you could imagine you can get it. But they won't last long if you're photographing animals. And they don't last long if you're photographing animals and you have a brain in your head and you want to clean between. Wow that was really harsh. Sorry. When shooting animals, most people that know about animals, well, I guess actually probably shooting humans too. I just don't do humans all that much. 
But when you're shooting animals, it's really important that you're able to clean in between photo sessions because you don't want any kind of cross-contamination or anything that one animal might have crossed to another animal. So what I like about Plexi is it's completely sterilizable and easy. So between each set of photos, when I'm switching from one kitten to another um, that are not from the same litter, or when I'm shooting you know, someone else's animal, or when I'm shooting you know, my lizards or my snakes or a snake that might be in quarantine, I am able to just get a cleaner and clean this really well, and I don't have to be concerned. Whereas if you use fabric as your floor drop or you use paper, you can't really clean that very well unless you wash your fabric every single time. So I like that. I also think that that little bit of reflection um, is classy. I think it just gives it that high-end, nice finish look. So that's why I use Plexi. Um, the, the clear you can buy on Amazon. Um, or you can get it from like U.S. Plastics, I think is where I ordered this one from. The Black Reflective and the Mirror, I ordered from photobackdrops.com or something. I'll find it and I'll put the link in the comments and the description below so you guys can go there and check it out. They do have like a package deal where you can order like a set of them if you want to go all in and set up your own little studio. Um, Anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and start finishing setting up. Like I said, we're going to be using the two alien bees. And typically, I will put one, let's see, I like to pull this a little bit away. Pull it a little bit away from your background. You tend to not get, you get even less light on your background, which in the end will make for even better photos. So I like to do that. And then I put this one more toward the front. So when I'm shooting, I'll be shooting right here up against this. And then this one I like a little bit on the side. That's typically, unless I'm doing something funky like gels from the back, this is typically my light setup. One right beside me and then this one off to the side just a little bit. And you can play around. If, I put, if I'm shooting an animal with a lot of really cool hair, and I put this one back here. Actually, I need to go farther back. But if you put this light to where it's back here, when that animal's up there, it will halo the hair. It can add a really cool effect. You can put it above the animal or human. I just don't shoot humans. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I wish I could. No, just kidding, just kidding. I should probably cut all that out. Um, anyways, it can give a very cool effect. So it does depend. If you're going for really, really dramatic light and dark or black and white images, I like to just take only use one light. So I might only use this light and bring it to the front and shoot so that you're getting the shadows. Well, you're getting the light and you're getting the shadows on this side. And that can make for a really dramatic portrait. All right, so back though the way that I wanted to have it. And I'm going to clean that and put up my GoPro and I will be back in just a minute. Okay, so this is my camera. Is uh, This is an Olympus EM-1. And I've shot with Canon and Nikon and Sony, all the big gear. But when I was shooting for hours on end, I was finding that my wrists were starting to hurt pretty bad. So I decided to switch to something lighter for my studio work. And it's also nice when I travel because I can take a bunch of lenses and they don't take up that much room. As you can see, I have my transmitter so that they um, it will trigger my lights. So let's see. Let's see if I can get to focus this close. So you saw my lights went off, so it is working. I have my settings. Um, hold on one second. I like my shutter speed to be at 320. And then I typically shoot between f8 and f11 as my aperture when I'm in the studio. That makes everything nice and crisp and clear. That's when I'm using my flash units. The lens that I have on here, oops, hang on, I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, is a 12 to 40 millimeter lens. This is a micro four third sensor. So I'm gonna do a little bit of gear talk here. Um, if you're shooting on a full frame, you know, one of the pro line cameras, this is almost like kind of like half that. So 
when I was shooting on a full frame camera in the past, my go-to lens for studio work was a 24 to 70 millimeter lens or a 35 millimeter lens is what I shot with. Um, I like being able to zoom. This one does zoom. So when I'm doing studio work, that's really convenient. I also, when I'm doing studio work, use these two sometimes. When I'm using, again, this is the flash units. I use different gear when I use my continuous lighting. This is the 30, a 30 millimeter macro, which means I can get really, really close to what I'm shooting. So those cool lizard eyes and snake eye photos, those cool snake eye photos um, are from me using the macro. This is a bigger zoom lens. And it is a 40 to 150, which on a micro four thirds, that's kind of like an 80 to 300 ish kind of thing going on. Um, when I have a cranky snake I'm gonna photograph and I don't wanna get that close, I will use this one because I can zoom in pretty far rather than getting right up in their face and disturbing them or, you know, getting bit. Anyways, so that's what I have those on. That's my settings. My ISO is on 200 because I like my ISO to be as low as it can possibly be. Anyways, so this is what we're gonna be using and we're gonna go ahead and start.
behind the scenes. I'm going to put some of the images up now and they're going to show you the unedited straight out of my camera. I shoot raw. I've got cat hair on my face. I shoot raw which means my images are kind of boring straight out of the camera. They're not JPEGs. My camera doesn't add enhancements. It takes the photograph completely flat so that I have a lot of creative license to edit them how I would like. Then what you will see is the edited image and I'm very careful to only edit my images to where my animals are still realistic to what I see with my human eye in person. So what you'll see is the unedited, which means the blacks are dull, the colors are dull, and then you will see, those are the raw images, and then you will see the edited images where I've cleaned up and made them look real to life and made them pop without changing the appearance of the animal. So I hope this was interesting. If you guys would like to see more of these type of videos, please tell me in the comments below. And um, if you have a certain setup you would like to see me do, any questions that I can answer, anything like that, just please let me know and I will see what I can do. Bye!